Okay, welcome back guys. We are here and we're going to open all those Dollarama Magic Cards. Uh, maybe a lot of you guys don't know this, but I've been looking to get my hands on these Dollarama or Dollar Store cards for a while. Uh, I haven't found them uh, at the Dollar Store ever since I first bought them in like 2017. So, finally able to do it. And uh, yeah, I purchased $120 worth of Dollarama cards. So, let's open those. Uh, first pack, so let's sort them by foil, rare, and uh, foils and rares. Basically, I think those packs, uh, so I have, I have like 50 of those, I think. No, like 30. I don't have too much, but those are all the, um, all foils and rares. So, uh, definitely, we'll probably get some cool stuff. And one thing that I, uh, one guy told me is, uh, his son opened some of those packs. And they may contain rares that weren't worth anything back then, but now they're valuable, like something like a plain bout accomplice that didn't used to be worth anything, but now found a home and it's worth a few bucks. So that's what we're going to aim for. So it uh, looks like so far they're pretty accurate with the ball cards. Uh, we're just going to try to find some cool stuff, but other than that, I still purchased it because... Uh, I thought it would be great content for the channel to buy out an entire uh, dollar MS worth of uh, magic cards. Uh, maybe if the video does well, I'm going to get a good percentage of my money back. Uh, now let's just switch over to some of the other packs. Those are the um, 15 cards. This you have 15 cards and one rare. So just like a regular magic pack. Uh, how are these? Uh, so it looks like nothing of value in this stuff. Uh, we got an Arc Priest and some other cards. I'm not gonna bother putting them on the right side. It's gonna be too much time. Because I don't I don't wanna make this video like 45 minutes or an hour. I wanna be rather quick. I know you guys have a lot of things to do in your day other than watch me open Dollarama magic cards. <laughs> but I thought the video idea was pretty cool and I've seen other uh, YouTubers do it. Especially Matt Caster Mage, shout out to you. Crackling Dre, Golgari Charm, that's not bad. Uh, so, okay, I guess it's not too bad. Uh, especially Matt Caster Mage, he's another Canadian YouTuber, so definitely go check him out. Uh, I'm here to support my other Canadian YouTubers. Um, I think in Canada we have like three big YouTube, or four. We have uh, Matt Caster Mage, we have MTG Moxman, we have GG for Goblin Guide. Uh, who's the burn master and then myself obviously and i'm looking to get that number one spot for canadian youtubers the the channel is growing rapidly right now so uh, i think it's realistic and it's just really a pleasure to see that you guys really enjoy the videos uh do we have no rare in this let's just double check oh yeah that's the rare so i don't think there's anything of value but at least i'll have a decent amount of bulk rares uh, to collect see if ever in the future some of those cards become valuable uh, one thing i've learned from buying and selling uh, some rares like bulk bulk rares or two dollar rares is uh, if a rare isn't worth like two bucks you're probably better off keeping it instead of buy listing it for like 10 or 15 cents because chances are uh, a small percentage of the bulk rares you own right now will likely find a home in the future and they will go up in value they won't stay uh they won't stay 15 cents uh, their entire lifetime it's gonna they're gonna find some some home sometime uh in the future um at least a good percentage of them so mostly unsets and garbage bulk but we never know <laughs> let's say we find uh i don't know plain bond accomplice was a great example or days undoing a card that wasn't worth anything now it's worth like 15 bucks i think uh, so yeah, I don't think these. Uh, I don't think we're gonna find any value, but it's just something that I've been looking for for such a long time. Then I was playing the team trios today with uh, my friends, and then one of them went to the Dollar Emma to buy some snacks. I think then he found those magic cards. And he opened them in front of me. I was like, "Where did you find those?" He's like, "Oh, the Dollar Emma." I was like, "No way, there are magic cards there." And yes, there were magic cards there. I said, "I'm gonna buy anything." He's like, "Bro, you're crazy." Don't buy all that stuff. It's only garbage. I'm like, it's gonna. I'm gonna make a video 
I bet it's gonna get a lot of views. And these videos really do well on YouTube, so it's one of probably the main reason why I bought all of those. I think it's great content for the channel. Me doing things you guys wouldn't do because you're actually intelligent with your money. And uh, I guess I can be sometimes, but I can be a little stupid uh, at times. And uh, this is a good example of one of those times. But if it entertains you, oh, uh, def uh, Deafening, yeah, Deafening Clarion. That used to be a great card. Don't know if it's worth anything now. But uh, I'm going to check out all the values after this opening on uh, MTG Goldfish or some other website. Let's see if I got anything uh, noteworthy. Another rare, or at least I have a lot of bulk rares. And what I like about bulk rares is you can just hold on to them for a long time. And eventually, as I mentioned, there's going to be at least a couple of them that find a home and uh, go up in value a little bit. And they're going to pay for so much percentage of what you paid for all the bulk rares. But in this case, I pay like two bucks a pack, so I don't think there's any way I get my money back in cards. I think the only option is if this video go, uh, goes viral and I get some good ad revenue. And I think it's unlikely to go viral, but maybe it will. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but yeah, those Dollarama packs, I mean, it's pretty cool to find them. Uh, so far, the sets are pretty garbage. Like, we don't get... Uh, didn't get any conspiracy or modern horizon scars or anything that could be valuable and also don't underestimate the foils i know nowadays foils are becoming so common but if you get foils from older sets sometimes random comments can be worth 10 15 bucks uh any all day like um sakura tribe scout is a great example or cards from uh, new phyrexia stuff like that uh, especially the infect creatures like the blighted agent or um, Land of War Elves, uh, not Land of War Elves, uh, what's the name of the elf? Flame Jab, I think it's a decent card. Uh, mod Moderation, okay, so a Modern Horizons 2 card. I know this card may not be worth a lot of money right now, but it's a card in Modern Horizons 2, so by design, it is engineered to be a good card. And if ever it finds a home, Modern Horizons 2 being a premium set, there's going to have a lot less supply in the marketplace. So there's a bigger chance of it going up simply uh, for the fact of it being in Modern Horizons 2. So getting a Modern Horizons 2 rare is not, not that bad. Uh, I mean, it's not, <laughs> not getting my money back or anything. Is it Charm? It's not too bad. Uh, Ride the Avalanche. Uh, Triumph. We Dragonauts. Uh, I think the regular packs of 15 cards are actually better than the four premium and rare cards because these are really bulk crap. <laughs> Uh, Anax, pretty good. Cascade Seer, Mask Admirers. And $2.50, a little abusive for that kind of quality of cards. Uh, I don't think that was a great investment. Uh, Chicken a la King, look at me, I'm DCI, so all unsets. I think it should be a rule where it's uh, forbidden to put un cards in those because what if. You're a beginner player and you want to have friends, uh, you want to play them with friends or do a draft. Having on cards can really, um, can really kind of change the whole play experience and make it a lot worse and more complicated, especially for newer players. Um, another Deafening Clarion. So for those of you who think, oh, these cards are fake, it's just a random company that did... Uh, did fake cards and sell, sold them to dollar stores. No, it's actually a uh, distribution deal, a partnership with Wizards of the Coast, Primal Might. Um, they actually partner with each other. Found the Inspector, it used to be worth like a couple dollars, but now with all those reprints, not worth anything. So you see, um, the enclosed genuine collectible trading cards have been legally purchased and repackaged for retail sale by Prestine uh, Marketing Inc. So uh, Wizards of the Coast sells cards in bulk to them. And they, uh, they sell them. Or maybe they, um, they just buy bulk from people and resell them. And they have a, a permit for those. I don't know. I don't know what's the, the legality behind all of that. But maybe that's the reason why I couldn't find them for a while. Uh, maybe they were fighting a lawsuit. Or I don't know. Uh, I don't know what could happen uh, behind closed doors with that stuff. I'm not really a legal expert uh, in that department. Uh, so yeah, I think we're about halfway through, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, so far we didn't find anything of value. 
but uh, Vera, Lo Vera Zo, this is this could be something that's worth a couple of dollars in the future. I look for those kind of cars, not really for those expensive cars, because uh, if you can find cars that have potential, I'm all about that. Um, the desert, it's not too bad. Another of our results, so uh, I think maybe they just buy certain cards to make sure they don't have any value, and they just randomize those specific cards. Like they have, let's say, 30 different rares, and they just randomize them. Ventress Gargoyle, uh, this is actually a pretty good card, it's being played. Uh, so I don't think they have like a really randomized, I think they, they are semi-randomized. They know which cards are possible to get and they ran randomize based on that list of cards. Oh, there's a Modern Horizons 2 uh, sketch, I think, sketch card, I think that's what they call them. Uh, so yeah, guys, uh, let me know if you want me to do more dollar store, dollar rama pack openings, if you guys really enjoy them. Uh, I don't think we're going to get rich doing that, but... <laughs> Maybe an option in the future. And this time, uh, by uh, as of the filming of this video, I haven't edited it yet, but you're going to see the editing at the beginning. Well, you will have seen it by the time you're watching this. So my first time doing some actual editing on a video. Um, it's uh, it's going to be a big accomplishment for this channel. First time doing editing. And also one thing I wanted to accomplish, I wanted to do a uh, I wanted to get monetized on YouTube before doing any editing before using a screen and before revealing my face so I literally took my phone and recorded myself talking about magic cards and uh, basically just that for a year and a half and I was able to get the channel monetized uh, so you need to have a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours then ever since that, I've been doing those kind of videos as well as uh, screen recording videos. And now I'm trying out editing. And if these videos do well, well, I'm going to keep doing them, of course, because I want the channel to grow. I want this channel to be the biggest Canadian magic channel. That's my goal. And then once we get that, maybe the biggest magic channel, period. That would be insane. And if I can get full time income on YouTube, uh, that would be uh, even better. You guys would get daily videos, of course. But right now, for this summer, I'm doing daily videos, uh, entire summer. Uh, so you guys will enjoy all types of content. So if you have any suggestions, you can also leave them down below in the comments. Uh, I'm really, I read all of them and I try to apply to most of them. Uh, just if you leave a really dumb comment, I'm probably not going to answer. But I will read it for sure. I read all of them uh, with no exceptions because I don't have that many comments on my videos. I'm not a big channel by any means, by any stretch of the imagination. But I still get some decent views. This is what I like. I have like 2,000 subscribers, uh, like 2,200 as of the filming of this. But my videos still get like one to 2,000 views each. It really depends on the video. Sometimes they get like two, 3,000. Sometimes they get like 100. It really depends on the content uh, and the YouTube algorithm, if they like me or they don't like me that day. Uh, it really depends on that, so uh, I need to do favors to the YouTube algorithm because they decide whether I'm going to become famous and rich or I'm going to be broke for all my life. Uh, Talrin, Sky Summoner, not too bad. B-I-N-G-O. Oh, so I didn't even sort all the foils. God damn. <laughs> so I'm going to have to sort, sort the foils after this video. Or maybe after, if I find something else to say, but I doubt it. <laughs> uh, Eve, Progenitor Ooze. I play this in Legacy. This is a card I got ridiculed for. Because I played in my Legacy Ant deck, because you can search for it with your tutor, and crack your Lion's Eye Diamond in response and play it, and get a bunch of 2-2s two that become bigger. And it's really good, instead of um, Empty the Warrens, because it actually makes big creatures. That you can't get rid of with engineered explosives or uh, electricery or um, what's the kind of shrivel shrivel type effects they're not playing shrivel in legacy but stuff that does minus one minus one to all creatures in play uh, plague engineer plague engineer that's right um, so i think it's a good alternate win con uh, another adventurous gargoyle so yeah i think it's a set of like 20 or 30 rares and they just randomize based on that list. They don't do a really randomized. It's semi-randomized, they say. Uh, 15 trading cards includes one rare card. That's all they say. So 
at least at least they tell the truth they don't try to sell you a dream of you're gonna have uh one one hundredth of a percent of chance of getting a black lotus because we all know that's not happening if they write this and i think legally they could uh, possibly get in trouble for that as i said i don't know anything about these legal things but uh it's pretty much basic common sense so those are all the packs that i have left let's just hope i find some value to finish off the video on a good note uh so these were a dollar and fifty cents, and the other packs with four, uh, with two foils and two uh, two rares were two dollars and fifty cents. Those are Canadian prices because I'm in Canada. Uh, so that's a huge rip off, <laughs> huge rip off. Do not buy magic cards at Dollarama, unless you have a YouTube channel and you have a lot of subscribers that are gonna watch your videos. Otherwise, it's not worth it. I know Matt Castermage, uh, the guy that I talked about, the Canadian YouTuber does these videos like random unboxings or flea market videos or Dollarama or Dollar Store and those are his more, most popular videos he does them very often he's had a lot of success doing it so uh, I tried to uh, to copy him for one video see uh, see if I'm gonna have replicate that and uh, of course that's no that's no shade on him I like him uh, I don't know if he watches my videos but if you do go subscribe uh, to Matt Caster Mage Matt Caster Mage, keep doing your videos. Um, I want me to be bigger than you as a YouTuber, but I still want you to have success. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just have less than me, please. <laughs> nah, there's actually like no no competition. It's all friendly. I don't. I've never talked to him personally. I've never seen him on a Magic event. So maybe he doesn't play competitively. He's just a finance, a Magic finance guy, and that's completely fine. I don't have anything against people who make money selling Magic cards to me. This is totally fine. It's a free market. You can do whatever you want. So last pack, guys. Last pack. Drum roll. Let's see what I get. Let's see if we're able to get rich with these uh, dollar store packs. And uh, what's the rare? What's the rare? Bag of tricks. Uh, and you just tricked me into spending 120 bucks on some garbage. So uh, yeah, guys. That's pretty much it. Let's count the number of rares we got. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty, sixty-one, sixty-two, sixty-three, sixty-four, sixty-five, sixty-six, sixty-seven, sixty-eight, sixty-nine, seventy. Seventy rares in total. So seventy rares. And a bunch of bulk for 120 bucks. Is it worth it? Did I get ripped off? Leave a comment down below. And please share this video as much as possible. So I can get as many subscribers. Uh, so I can cope with the pain that I had to deal with. Spending all this money on worthless cards. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Because if you're watching until the end. That means you're supporting the channel. And you're helping me with my pain. So thank you guys for watching yet again. Uh, leave in the comments down below if you want to see more videos like these uh, random unboxings have daily video comings all summer for you guys and then for the rest of the year i'm probably going to try to do two to three videos every single week i'm going to try to really do that youtube grind and uh just give you guys the content you want and give you give me all the suggestions you have because i'm doing all of it so if you have a suggestion there's a 90 percent chance i'm going to do it so thank you guys enough for watching uh, and uh, I will talk to you guys later.